No, it, it was uh, just an incredible setting. Everything was was good after watching the film. You know, we had a couple of mistakes, a couple of tough calls, a couple of poor decisions, and uh, found a way to lose a game that I thought we could have won. And yeah, we lost to a very good team. I uh, found out a lot about my team. Um, we're, we've got versatility. We can play different lineups. We, uh, our freshmen are going to get better. Um, I don't have any worries about that. Uh, we've got to stay out of the foolish ball of trouble because we've got enough of the regular. But in that game, there were 40, I think 44 free throws, and that was a tough, tough deal. Uh, but as far as uh, heading out of there, I felt like we played hard enough. Uh, we rebounded pretty well until the last five minutes of the game when we were so small and that hurt us there. But the passion of our players, the aggressiveness uh, was all good. So heading into now, the next tough challenge against Kentucky uh, brings on some new things. I think this is the best Kentucky team I've seen. And I say that because, uh, as I told Cal, they're almost illegal. They got four seniors. So I've got four seniors that I can remember ever, uh, and four good seniors. Uh, one's a fifth-year guy, the Reeves kid from Illinois State is leading in scoring, a prolific shooter. Frederick, the kid who came over from Iowa, so we know him, and then set out a year with injuries, um, is even a better shooter. Uh, Toppin uh, is a kid that, uh, you know, it's been there now for a while. Um, athletic, long. Uh, he's a very good, very, very good player. And Wheeler, the point guard, is uh, a kid who can run a team. He's kind of a the team cleaves. He, he really runs their team well and he guards his butt off. So those four seniors, um, along with the two McDonald All-Americans, living spin and uh, the other kid I said, uh, another guard they got, Wallace. That's Wallace. And Wallace has started a lot now for him. But the biggest problem for us is we know who they're going to play. Uh, Wheeler came back last game. He'll play. He played 27 minutes coming back. He missed, a, I don't know, a week or two. But uh, Oscar, who I'm uh, 99% sure is playing, but hasn't played an exhibition game or any of the preseason games. So we had to go back from last year, look at film. I'm sure he's changed some over the summer. So it's a little bit of the unknown. Uh, and Reeves and Fredrickson, two shooters are averaging 37 points between them. Um, and as we know, this team is the best rebounding team in the world. So um, a lot more, they've got a lot of depth. Uh, they have, um, huge inside uh, with length and yet um, you know it's another game for us that we'll kind of learn a lot about our team I, I do like most of the things that happened to us as far as what we did that our guard play was better than getting Jaden back is going to still be a big key getting him up here to rebound a little better is going to be Big four, especially in this game. But AJ played very well in the league. And uh, we're back inside. I think it'll help Joey a little bit if we stay out of foul trouble. Questions? Tom, I'm just wondering how you've managed this turnaround. Obviously, it's not often you guys go all the way out there for one game, come all the way back, and then play quickly. I mean, as far as managing or their sleep and everything, you making sure they're ready. How have you had that? Yeah, you know, we let them sleep in on Saturday. And, uh, and, uh, Kind of had a walkthrough film session Saturday afternoon. Sunday we went in the morning, then again at night. Um, and that was really good. Thought we were real good. Today will be a regular practice, and then we'll go down. So, I mean, harder on the coaches at this point than it is the players because, you know, we worked all night, they slept on the phone, we worked all morning, they slept in. It's a little harder on the on my staff than it is on them right now, especially this early in the season. So I don't see any after effects. 
or any problems with that as far as uh, this early in the season. As we go later on, could rear its ugly head. But right now, we're excited, ready to go. Hey, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Obviously, Matt, Matty had a, a big game on the boards and was aggressive, but the gang rebounding you guys were uh, presenting in that game, uh, how, how much do you need that? this year in particular, and particularly with this stretch of games? Well, you know, it's hard with with uh, Jaden because, you know, he's, he's just coming off of nine weeks off. But uh, Jaden is one of my better rebounding guards, and he's get, he's only got one in the two games. Pierre has got the body to be a great rebounder, and he's got one in two games. So that right now is a point of emphasis in today's practice. Uh, that's part of the game. AJ's rebounded pretty well, and our bigs have done a decent job, and I can't believe I left Monty out of there if I really didn't leave him out. But um, you really enjoy when a kid works his tail off, pays his dues, goes through the process, and then has some success. Now the issue will be, can you duplicate that? Can you come back and have another game, figure out how to stay out of a little bit of foul trouble? Um, but I think game rebounding is going to be the key to our season. We're going to have to be able to defend the game rebound and uh, maybe do a little bit of job offensively. But we were limited. It was a funny game because the day before, some of you that were there, it was a lot windier on Thursday than it was even on Friday. And it was more windy on Friday than it was the last time we played. So we tried to change a game plan in the middle of the night and say, well, we're going to go inside and we're going to do this. Even the last couple of plays, what you can run. So uh, I, I was pleased by everything except uh, we had one bad stretch. Um, we had a different lineup in there during that stretch with Julian. And uh, we had two or three guys out at that point, uh, Monty, and, and it hurt us. But... Uh, in general, I think there was a lot more positives in there. You mentioned Monty. How much do you think that that game going up against Drew Timmy was a good uh, tune-up for what's to come in Kentucky's big game? Well, the, the, the difference is, as I told my staff, and then I told my team a little bit, but more my staff, the biggest difference is um, we're going to go from a team who is you know, runs a lot of stuff and does a lot of things and completely goes into their center in Gonzaga. And now we're going to go into one that is athletic as maybe any team will play with a great point guard and um, but wings that can shoot and length and they, you know, where where uh, I'll say Oscar, she boy I guess it is, but I'll say Oscar is uh, he gets a lot of his points. He, he averaged six point two offensive rebounds a game last year. I mean, that's that's unbelievable. And uh, and because of that he scores a lot of his points that way. Uh, so they don't go to him like Gonzaga went to him, at least they haven't. Now maybe they will this year because he's been in the program a little longer. We just haven't been able to see that because he hasn't played. Tom, in the arc of a season and a career for Jackson Kohler to get humbled early like that and to see what's sort of real, I'm wondering how beneficial it is in terms of having his attention on what life can be and, and, and sort of where you go from him now that he's seen it. Well, we're definitely going to have to play all three of our bigs because we're going to have to bring him in there a little bit more. And uh, as I probably poorly told Jack, there was a reason why uh, Carson didn't play. Um, but at the same time, uh, this game has a lot more length and a lot more girth than the last one we played. And so it is great for, for Jackson. He's going to uh, he's going to see what it's like to play against those kind of people. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like we felt he was a fish out of water. There were some things that we felt, too. Timmy's very good at how he posts up, how he you know, kind of posts up, I'll just say, um, that, you know, it can help Carson learn in one way, but help figure out how you have to defend in the other. Well, I mean, uh, Jackson. One thing about Jackson, he's a smart kid, and uh, 
we need to get him the ball a little bit more too to, to help us uh, make up for what his strengths are and what his weaknesses are. But the last two and a half weeks, we've been really excited about his progress. He's running the floor better. He's doing some things better. You know, it's just so hard to judge. We went back and looked at everybody from Raymond to Xavier to uh, Costello. And you know, those guys played seconds of games early in. And because we need him, um, it's, it's unfair to judge him because I can only judge him on the practices. I can't judge him against arguably the best center in college basketball. And what I've seen in practice and what he's done, we're really excited about him, seriously, really excited. So he's had a lot better the last couple of weeks. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how we all handle, because uh, nobody else has handled Oscar very well. That's why you average 17 points and almost 16 rebounds. And yet, uh, we're going to look at some things that we think we can do, try to take advantage of some things that he doesn't do as well. I'm assuming with Jaden still, still obviously slowly kind of coming back. Um, with that game and the environment, all that was it. Did he play about as much as he wanted? And and with this quicker turnaround, is it still yet another step up? See how he kind of reacts. Uh, it's it's it was a big problem. I think if there was a negative, he sat nine minutes in the second half, and partially because you know to start the second half, what I rather have gotten in there a little bit more, I would have, but we also looked at things that happened the day before. Was the court going to be a little slippery? Was this and that? It was very hard to go into that game uh, thinking we were going to work on a lot of our three-point shooting stuff. And also with him, I'm still thinking of the big picture. Uh, I do feel now he's full ready to go. You know, and he's got to get in more. And he's got, but he's got to do a little more too. You know, it's not just about shooting. He's, he's got to defend, but he's got to rebound the ball. I mean, we got to have him and Pierre rebounding the basketball. And I think you'll see a lot more Jaden in this game. Um, he's come out of the the week. That was the week. You know, the first game and the second game. The week. How is he going to come out? The aircraft and the court. All those things looking at the big picture. What I'd like to have gotten him in a little earlier in the second half, probably. Uh, was he ready for that after nine weeks off? Probably not. But uh, he'll play more tomorrow, I promise. Chris, um, can you, can you kind of, it's a kind of two-parter, so bear with me here. All right, I'll get the point. Um, I wanted to touch on, you, just you brought up the that, that lineup that you had at the end of the first half with the four point guards out there, I guess, what did you see from from that that little stretch where you had, I think it was Tyson, AJ, uh, Jaden, and Holloman out there? And then the second part of it is, what did you guys as a staff learn about the substitution patterns, letting guys stay in, and, and how to kind of manage this uh, this type of a game with the, the roster you have right now. Well, we're going to be learning as we go, too, but some of it depends on who you're playing. I mean, there were a lot of fouls called in that game, and so it had to be managed. Not many teams just absolutely throw it in to a guy who has those kind of post moves with his game when he draws fouls. He's very good at it. Um, I don't think you can go with four little guards in there. Uh, on many occasions, you're going to have a little bit of opportunity when you can do that. But um, I was just pleased that, in my mind, AJ played a lot more under control and better. He had a couple turnovers, but but uh, I thought he played very well within himself and made his free throws, which was a big deal. Um, I thought that. Uh, Jaden, you know, we couldn't expect much from him because we didn't know what it was going to be like. And I mean, he just, nobody's more frustrated than him. He wants to get it all back in one day, and, and not, that's not going to happen. You know, you look at the NBA, they say you're out nine weeks. It's probably going to take you three, four weeks to come back. We're trying to do it all in a week. And, uh, but he's a competitive kid, 
and I think you'll see a bit from him uh, this week. But listen, if you're going to try to predict where we are or who should be playing, good luck. Because we know what our seven guys are. We we know that uh, Carson Cooper is going to have to play some. We know that Trey is going to play some. But the seven, eight guys that are going to be in there most of the time right now are the seven, eight guys. We just hope that um, we get a little bit more. You know, it wouldn't have taken much more. A little more from Jaden, a little more from Joey, a little more from uh, maybe even Tyson. I'd like to see him a little more aggressive and getting shots up. But uh, yeah, that's what I like about this team. I do think we have versatility to play different ways. We can play Malik and Joey together and go small on the perimeter. We can. But you can't go too small against a team like this. Um, you know, the missed shot over the year, last year, has been there. It's good offense as anything. The fast break is really good. Uh, as I said, I think this is his best team because I think he he's had teams that didn't shoot it as well. He's got two guys that can knock shots down. He's got a bona fide point guard who runs the team at 11 assists the last game. And he's got a bunch of inside guys that have length. You know, uh, their problem's going to be how you play them all together, how many balls, you know, the same problems that you always have. But John manages that about as good as anybody I know. And, uh, you know, just getting Oscar back and even Wheeler, when we have like three, four tapes of them for their exhibition games and everything, you can't use any of them. That's what's difficult for us right now. And, uh, you know, we should put in. I, I'm 99% sure he'll play from all indications I've gotten. But it is different how long we play, what we're going to do, how are they playing with him now, how much has he improved from last year. Those are all things that we're going in not knowing. And that's a little discomforting, to be honest with you. Tom have also got multiple parts, I apologize. First one is quick, though. Just, is Malik your only captain? I don't believe we've asked you about that. If I did, I we really it. don't have captains right now. We're going to try to go game by game. So I mean, Malik is our acting one, but uh, we have not announced that. I'm uh, looking at some different options and keeping some pressure on guys that being a captain's got to mean a little bit more than it has the last couple of years where you're captain by age and not by what you're doing. So. Uh, yeah, he's acting it right now, and uh, but it will go by game and by practices and a little different. Okay. Uh, I also want to ask you, in the two and a half days or whatever it's been since, since out there, I'm just wondering what you've noticed in terms of body language and conversation with guys, in terms of balancing, of course, the disappointment. You almost had that game. You could have beat number two, but also I imagine a lot of guys come out of there feeling pretty good about what this team could be. And what's the net of that, the disappointment on one hand, the optimism on the other? You know, to be honest with you, we, we approached this summer with this schedule. We knew it from June when we got here. That's when we finally got the Villanova and the aircraft carrier. And we approached every day like we know we had a tough schedule. And I don't think we went in um, not thinking we could beat them. And I say that because we thought we messed up in every way but one with them. Uh, we did not think we matched up as good at center, and ironically, our center played pretty well. But uh, it's still in the end, you know, why did you lose? A million reasons, you know. But at the end, they're all American. Came through and made a couple big rebounds, a couple of big rebounds, and then, and then they scored. And uh, But that part, I don't think we looked at it as any moral thing. I mean, that was our game to lose, really, and we did. Uh, we felt like we played well enough to win that game, we, probably for 30 some minutes. And uh, so there was more disappointment than satisfaction. But at the same time, we also know the satisfaction is we played with a quality team, a very well coached team, a good team. Um, and now we're going to get almost the exact opposite. You know, um, that was not a 
real athletic team, although the perimeter guards have some athletes. Now we're going to go against length and athleticism. There we went with some skill level, with, especially with uh, their center and uh, with Timmy and, you know, pretty solid play. Now you're going to go a real solid play at the point. Their point was a new point. He'd been in the program, but first time starting. And uh, and I think the two shooters, Frederick and, and Reeves, uh, make a difference on this team. And the reason I'm not putting pressure on John, why I think it's one of his best teams, is even when they won it all, they had a lot of freshmen. And now they have seniors that can lead the freshmen, and they don't have to rely on all the freshmen. And uh, that's different for him. So give him credit. He's uh, found a way, but he's had all those guys in the program, too. The only one that's new is Reeves. He's had them all there. John, you said Gonzaga is All-American, played like an All-American. That was the difference in a one-play game. How often do All-Americans get All-American calls, whether it's yours or theirs, and do you almost have to prepare for that kind of officiating? Yeah, I was disappointed. You know, I, 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 I told you that after the game, I just thought there was some things that were um, you know, I'm watching the film, or, but that's all part of the game. Officiating did not lose us the game, but it also, there were some strange calls that, that put us in a bad position, but uh, they, uh, they won the game, so uh, you, all Americans are going to get calls. I've had all Americans that got calls, so probably all Americans do get some calls. Did you get an explanation on the one where it looked like your guy got concussion and, and just got clobbered? And yeah, I guess it was all in the way um, the way that they saw it, from the angle they saw it. I don't know if that was a similar angle, but I did not. Uh, I did not. You know, I don't call, and I'm one of those weirdo coaches that uh, the guys are doing. Um, six games a week, call in two days later, never seemed to turn me on. So I, I, I don't bother doing that. I, when I talked to him in the game, I could tell there was some question marks. That's why they went to the monitor and came back. Let's, I mean, there was another one on Malik over on the side. When you watch it on film, he, it, it, both hands are up. Does he touch him? He might have. And the explanation was for the guy dribbled out of bounds. And so he was kind of stuck. I had to call the foul or I had to, you know. And I said, well, even the ball out of bounds is better than a foul, you know. But um, again, uh, there were some things I was not pleased with. But we had, when you have a 12-point lead, you have a chance to win the game. And we didn't do the things that we were needed to win the game. So that's our fault, not anybody else's, seriously. You mentioned how the aircraft carrier game is a Michigan State thing. That's why you could not turn it down. How much do you feel like the Champions Classic is also a Michigan State thing just because of you and the other three programs who have been part of it for, the last, for all this time? Or maybe Matt would know this when it's what is this thirteenth year or twelfth? Started in eleven. Started eleven after the first carrier game. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so this would be year number twelve or thirteen. So, you know, I think we've got three more years. I mean, this is a privilege and an honor. This was earned over a period of time. And uh, I hope Michigan State fans appreciate that we are playing in this thing here. And it is something I would never give up. Um, I just think it's a night of college basketball that brings all these teams together. And uh, they've kind of earned the right to be there over 100 years. We've earned the right to be there over 20. And uh, with that being said, um, that's one of the things I appreciate and take pride in, to be honest with you, because uh, it'll be a a hell of a night of basketball. Uh, it was some of the best programs that ever played the game, to be honest with you. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that opportunity. I really am. And I don't think it's a Michigan State thing as far as those other programs are even higher up as far as the number of games they've won and what they've accomplished. But I think, uh, you know, 
we're not going to take a back seat to anybody in it either. Coach, um, so earlier you said that the aircraft carriers game, you learned a lot about your team. What do you think is the most important takeaway coming from that game? We competed by far the most important. That first half, defensively, we were really, really, really good. Got a little less aggressive when we got in foul trouble. But I thought we competed, uh, you know, really well. We rebounded pretty well. We did the things we had to do. Um, and uh, even ran pretty well. Uh, but if I had to pick one word, we competed. If we compete like that, uh, we'll win our share games. And that's what I took out of that. Uh, Tom, you mentioned that there wasn't going to be a whole lot of time to learn stuff in practice and more on the fly. Now that you're in it, how do you see that playing out? Well, we, we, we had a lot of meetings. We had a lot of film sessions with our guys, but there's just certain things you have to adjust to and adapt to. And, uh, you know, the flight back, we get back at 3.30, 4, 4, 4, 30, probably back to the arena. Um, and so it's, you know, you gotta manage what you think you can manage and you gotta get to know your team on who can take what and who can't take what as far as the, but this early, I thought our guys responded very well. You know, do I worry as it goes on? Maybe a little bit, another trip to the West Coast. But right now, I think we're as good as we can be going down there. I think we're fresh. And today we'll have a sharp practice, but some of the things we did full court, maybe we do half court. We're trying to save some things a little bit. And then at the same time, um, boy, it's when, when you play a team that's such a good rebounding team, it's hard not to be physical in practice and figure that, you know, you get a guy under 260, a guy under 240, a guy 6'11, I think gone who might be the the most surprising guy, number 33, he looks like uh, Jabbar, he looks like him, but he uh, he's very athletic, he's got an incredible wingspan, he's someone we haven't talked about, I think it's one of John's favorite players, so uh, yeah, we're going to have to be physical, we're going to have to cut out, and to do that, you got to do it in practice some, and yet there's that balancing act of what you say them a little bit or not. I've always erred on the side of let's compete, figure out if we run out of gas, we run out of gas. You know, other people do it a different way. But if we compete like we did in this game, we'll be fine. And that's kind of what we're going to have to do, even at a better level. We, we have to do better. He brought it up the game rebounding. If Jaden and Pierre and maybe even AJ don't rebound, we're going to have enough work just to keep those other guys off the boards. Those three guards are going to have to rebound. If they get their share of rebounds, I like our chances better. Coach, when it comes to going up against Coach Calipari, you guys have had some great matchups. It's fun for all the fans to see you guys go against each other. But what's it like for you in a game against him to see some tendencies that he has and say, ah, I remember that. Let me go ahead and game plan against Yeah, him. you know, we play against each other quite a bit. We're we're actually pretty good friends. We uh, both uh, are on the Vitale All Italian League, I guess. So uh, we, um, and I'm on a couple boards with him, so I talk to him a lot. But uh, we're also pretty honest with each other, so we kind of know some of the goods and bads. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, there's no question he's always got one of the best teams in the country. And he's, I always got some of the most talented teams in the country. And, but I thought over the years as I watch him, if you watch him on the bench, he coaches his superstars like he coached the guys at Northern Michigan. And I, I do respect that. I, I, I really do. I think he's, he's tough on them and demanding of them. And, uh, and they respond. So, yeah, there's things, I mean, he's changed up because Sometimes he gets different kinds of talent. But the one thing that's always been good is he's always been better defensively than offensively, I think. I think this could be one of his better offensive teams because of the shooting he's got from those two shooters and the fact that he's got a, an anchor down there that is uh, pretty big. And he's got a point guard 
that wants to get everybody the ball. And I think uh, Wheeler probably doesn't get enough credit for what he does for a team like like most point guards that are facilitators don't get enough credit. He's a phenomenal defender. He gets into people and he uh, he can spray the ball. So it's just another one of John's teams that are all you know similar in, in, in talent respect but different because sometimes it's an inside, sometimes it's an outside. So I don't go in every year saying it's the same, but I say there are things that are the same. This year's team has got a lot of trouble driving kicks, and he's got athletes to do it. I mean, he's got a lot of athletes to do it. So. Last one, Chris. Oh, only that you brought it up, and I hadn't really thought of it. Is this the first game that Dick's going to do for you guys since everything? And I guess yeah, I thought you've seen us come back for this. I talked to Dick yesterday, and you know, he, since he's had the bout with cancer and the surgery on his uh, on his throat, um, his voice. I mean, talking about taking something away, taking Dick's voice away has got to be the worst thing in America for Dick. But he sounded great. It is the first game he's doing in, in a while now. He's pretty excited about it. I'm, you know, I'm excited to have him back. I mean, he's what 83 years old and says he feels 23. I said, well, you look 93, so um, that part hasn't changed. But, uh, you know, Dick is, I remember coming out of college and, and uh, Dick starting the TV, and I remember watching some of his teams he coached, but he has done a lot for college basketball, not as much as he's done for cancer. And both those things are really near and dear to my heart. And so uh, I've probably become closer with Dick over the years uh, you know, back with Adrian and, and the things we went through there. Uh, it's been a, a labor of love for him and the passion. I mean, he is a pain in your tail if you're on his call list for charity stuff. I mean, relentless. I mean, Mel will love the word. He is relentless. I mean, and uh, and yet it's such a positive, good way. And I think, I think you know, people, you know, you, you might get tired because Dick brings up so many things, but then when he's gone, you kind of miss him. The one thing that I know uh, that I respect more than anything with any other guys, he has a tremendous, tremendous um, passion for cancer. And he has a tremendous passion for college basketball. And those two things, you know, he loves his granddaughters and the tennis, and now he's got some at Duke, and he's had them at Notre Dame. And, uh, you know, I think his son-in-law was a pitcher. I mean, he's always been around sports. But his passion for college basketball, and I think he helped make the college basketball. You know, I felt like when we went with Nike, we were validated as a good program. Nike helped validate us. Dick Vitale helped validate college basketball. And uh, his legacy will be overwhelmed by his what he's done in cancer, if you ask me. But I do appreciate, as crazy as he gets sometimes, that he's, uh, his passion for the sport is off the charts. So it'll be good to see him, you know, Got to work my guys ahead of time at the layup line. He might be talking to him and doing what he, what Dick does. But uh, you, you, I never look at anything he does as phony. There's a lot of people I look at what they do as phony. That's probably the best problem. Right? All right, guys. Thanks. Thank you.